it's beautiful. Oh, I was worried sick about ordering it without Mama asking pesky questions. But then I realized we have the same initials. <laughs> Melissa Catherine Waller. Miss Kizzy Waller. <laughs> I'm such a ninny, I didn't realize it before. I'll never be able to thank you. Oh, no great shakes. Now, listen, Mama keeps going on about shipping me off to London for finishing school. And I know you don't believe in God, but say a prayer anyway. Oh, yeah. Jesus sure have taken care of us Negroes. Time's running short. What's your fancy? You already know all the dreadful Shakespeare dramas by heart? What's this monstrosity? Dr. John Hunter's Gross Anatomy. Oh, ew! Is that really what it looks like on the inside? I will never, ever have a baby. Oh, don't be hysterical. <laughs> for having me. Let's talk about Roots. Let's talk about it. One of the most groundbreaking TV series from 1977 yep. that obviously has been remade. Yep. How did you become a part of it? Um, I auditioned, like every actor does. Um, no, it's an, it's an honor to be a part of, even have a small part in it, um, in such a major uh, remake like this. It really was groundbreaking and the remake is just as monumental. So I auditioned um, for Mario Van Peebles, who's um, Night Two, uh, the director for Night Two. It's um, airing four consecutive nights starting Memorial Day. And there's a different director for each night, which is really interesting and innovative. So what was it like auditioning for Mario? I mean, he's kind of a living legend. Sure. Oh, it was uh, very nerve wracking, but very, very exciting, and he has a great energy, both on set and in the audition room. He gave uh, great notes. We kind of played off of each other. He told me what he was looking for, what maybe I could change, what he liked, which was kind of a fun process just in the audition. And I, I left feeling really good about it, and like it was a great experience. How much did you know about the story going in? I knew, honestly, very little. Um, which I think is why this remake is so important. It's my generation, it's this younger generation that doesn't know uh, how influential the original Roots was for people. Um, it was so widely watched uh, when it aired by millions of people. Um, but I knew very little about it. I, I had to research it, obviously, and look into it um, as I got further into the process. And it's an incredible history lesson, incredible life lesson, for sure. Now, we have Anika no and Noni Rose coming in also this week. Yes, so yes. So, you play her best friend. Amari? Don't you? She's actually the older version. Oh, she's Kizzy. the older, okay. I didn't actually work with her, which was what was so interesting. There's so many layers to this. Um, Amari was the teenage version of Kizzy. Of course, because Anika, yeah. That's right, that you saw in the clip. Tell me about your relationship with her, because I think that that is really kind of one of the linchpins of the story, what, you, what happens between you two. Sure. Uh, it's, the characters are very complicated and very layered. Obviously, the situations that they're in are horrific, um, but it's interesting to see the girls grow up uh, these two girls who have very different lifestyles. Um, but on the inside, obviously, they're just children. They're the same people. It's just their circumstances affect them so strongly. Um, but we have two girls who play the younger versions of us. So in, in those scenes, you really see the innocence that these girls have and that they grow up with. And then you see, as they grow up into teenagers, into, life into interferes. our characters, life interferes, circumstances interfere, and people around them heavily influence them, especially my character. And the relationship becomes more of a power play um, from my character's standpoint. Um, she sees the control she has, I think, over her best friend, who she kind of starts to treat as others do um, around her, as these adults are doing. Um, she's modeling after them, unfortunately, and the relationship um, you know, unfortunately goes downhill and it becomes this power play. 
Now, your accent in the, in the series is spot on Southern. How Thank did you. you get that? How much work did it take? Um, you know, it's, it, was a very, it was a very light Southern accent. Obviously, going into it, into the audition room, I took what I knew and went in there, um, you know, just going for it with the accent. And then I worked with Mario to kind of perfect it. He pulled it back a little bit, um, took what he liked, and helped me work on it which was really nice. And then all the other actors around me were very influential um, with just how much dedication everyone had to this and how much work they put into it knowing how important a story it is. And it's not just a mini series. I think it's something much more than that. So obviously every little piece of your character is so important. And obviously the story is just as relevant today as it was in 1977, Absolutely. given the headlines. Yep. What do you think people will take away from it? Gosh, um, I hope people take away um, why this is so important right now, why it's so relevant. The, you know, some of the same race issues are going on today. We've made so much progress, but there's so much more progress to be made. And I think this is a piece of history that is not supposed to be forgotten. We can't forget this, and that's why we need to keep showing these to the new generations, these stories. Um, but I, I also hope people take away the other messages. Um, it's, it's a brutal and horrific story, but it's also the family aspect is very heartwarming and hopeful. Um, you know, the survivor instincts that all these people have and the, the place that love plays into all of these characters and into their survival is so important and how important family is and um, loving one another and treating each other compassionately. I hope people take that away from it. How much of a history buff were you before this? Sorry? How much, were you a history buff before this? Well, it's actually interesting. It played in so perfectly. I'm, I'm a junior in high school, and uh, we were learning about the War of 1812, uh, actually around the time period that I was auditioning for this um, last year. So that was very interesting. I'm in, I'm in history class, I'm a student, so I'm learning. And uh, when I told my teacher that I was going away to rural Louisiana to film this, he was so excited. And, because um, it really is, it, it's like going on a field trip for history. And uh, it was very educational, very informative, real life experience. And um, yeah, just the whole series overall is a great history lesson. Absolutely. And here you are working with Anna Paquin, Lawrence Fishburne, James Purefoy's your father. Yeah. What was the overarching thing you took away from the experience? Gosh, um, absolutely. You're humbled going into work with such seasoned actors. Um, Matthew Good as well was incredible. I was so lucky to be able to be in scenes with James Purefoy, Matthew Good, etc. Katie McGinnis was amazing. She played my mother. Um, and again, I think it's just the dedication that everyone had to playing these characters and to telling this story. It was just on another level of, of a project that you do. You know, you put your all into a project, but something like this is, it's different. It's different. Um, it's this really, really important story and people were very dedicated. So all of the actors were incredible and I was trying to just be as observant as possible take it all in, kind of watch their movements. Malachi, who plays Kunta Kente, is unbelievable. I can't stress that enough. He was supposed to have a wounded leg in one of the scenes, and I was just watching him walk around set, limping, just being so method, getting into it. I mean, I was humbled to even be able to see him in action. Just an incredible guy, and the dedication that he has to playing this character the right way is mind-blowing and inspiring. Um, clearly, you're going to get an A in history class. I think that goes <laughs> without saying. A lot of the actors that I've spoken to always say that the costume is an integral part of getting into character and really being that person. I think for you especially on this, that must hold true. Absolutely. Ruth Carter was the costume designer. Um, in night two, just amazing. I think when I first went in for that fitting, it became so real. These costumes are very authentic, and they do, they help Meaning you Meaning they're the super comfortable, right? Very comfortable. <laughs> oh, just the most comfortable. Gosh, I was really I mean, I know you want. I, I know you wanted to wear one today, but oh, the rain I did. prevented you. I don't I know. know. I know. I it's a this. 
unfortunately. No, they were, um, they were very authentic. And just like an accent helps you kind of get into character, the costumes did the same thing. You're transformed. And through makeup and hair also, uh, just all of it combined was amazing. And the way that it comes together so beautifully. When I actually watched it, um, I saw some pieces when I was doing voiceover work. It was so beautiful, and it really looks like a painting in some aspects. The way they've done it is just so authentic and real. Uh, you really feel like you're there. And you're only 17 years old. You start in Dog with a Blog. You yeah. have a nail line. <laughs> I mean, what prompted you to be that, I guess, forward-thinking? I mean... I always like to be busy. So if you're not currently working on a project, I like to be doing other things. Um, I'm a full-time high school student, which takes up a lot of time, but I did create um, a nail line called Make Me Nails, uh, which allows users to create customized nail wraps. And I created it with a woman named Lauren Jones, who's um, a digital marketing um, woman who owns her own company, which is also very inspiring. And when I met her, she kind of inspired me to do something like that and be a girl boss. So it's been a really fun experience. We created this company. We have a website and an app, and it's a really fun outlet for young girls to kind of express themselves. When did you first feel the acting bug, so to speak? Um, well, I was, I was born in Boston, and I grew up in Maine. Um, and when I was in Maine, I did school plays. I did plays outside of school as well when I was really young, seven, eight. And from there, we kind of just decided to come out to Los Angeles for a few months and try it out for pilot season. And that's kind of how it happened, just to, you know, have fun. My dad um, was originally from out in Los Angeles, so we thought we'd go out there and give it a try. And I got very lucky very quickly. It was actually the writer's strike, which was a terrible time to be out there. Couldn't have picked a worse time. Um, and I instantly got very lucky, and it turned into a longer time period. And then how do you look back on Dog with a Blog? as a great experience, as such a fantastic experience. Um, children's programming is so fun. It's so fun. We have the cutest fans. They're like this. Do they still come up to you? Oh, it's the best. It's the best. So I'm so happy to have had that experience. I worked on Disney Channel for many years as a young person, and that's just any young girl's dream, I think, is to be on Disney Channel. And it was an amazing experience. What great... Uh, practice to be working like that continually on a show for three years. Just amazing experience overall and a great learning experience. So what do you want to do when you graduate? When I graduate, I'd like to go to college. Really? Right. Actually, I'd love to be in New York. So we'll kind of see how that plays out, but I'd love to be here. But I assume that you want to continue acting as well? I would like to. Obviously, I'd like to explore other things. I love writing as well. Um, but I think we'll kind of play it by ear. But yeah, I'd, I'd like to maybe do some theater, kind of see what happens. I think you'll be fine. Like, Thank I'm just you. guessing. Given Thank what you've you. achieved, and to, like, by the age of 17, I think you'll do okay. Thank you. For you, auditioning for this, was it incredibly daunting, or did you just put on your game face and walk in? Oh, very daunting. Uh, if you're talking about the audition process, that's a major adrenaline rush. So you kind of go in there, I put on my long skirt, uh, to get into character, and I went in there, you know, you want to be prepared, you go in there, I was very excited to, you know, meet Mario and everything, and you kind of have to be open, you know what you know, you do what you want to do, and then you're open to um, his input, etc. And what got, kind of guidance did he give you? Guidance? Um, you know, I think he really stressed to us on set, in general, just how important this is, um, and kind of the influence that it really, really has. Also, the executive producer talked to us as well, just how important this is to these people mm -hmm. to, to see something like this. It's monumental. It was and it is um, a huge influence and an incredible project. And did you watch the original? I did watch you the did. original, yeah. And what did you think? I, I see how important it was. I think you kind of get that as you watch it. Um, of course, I think it's, it's a great thing to be improved upon. I think we have incredible costume designers, incredible makeup, 
the setting we were in was beautiful. They shot in Africa as well. We were in Louisiana. Um, and I think the way that they've upgraded it in a very respectful way is uh, mind-blowing. They really did a great job. Tell me about your most starstruck day on set. Starstruck day on set. Oh, um, I think just uh, being in a scene with James Purefoy, Matthew Good, uh, very seasoned actors, very nice guys, um, obviously respect them greatly, have seen them in numerous projects. So just being in a scene with them and trying to, you know, be very professional and not starstruck. But um, I feel like it's, it's never starstruck as much as it, as it is inspired by. That's how I feel when, when you're working with somebody like that. It's more inspiring. You, you feel what they're giving off on set and it encourages you. Yeah, and you see why they are where they are. Sure, absolutely. I think, you know, you can't go into it thinking, I'm from Dog with a Blog, I know what I'm doing here. God, because I don't. So I think you have to go in very humble and, and very open to observing and learning from people around you. And uh, I'm sure we have some questions from our audience. How's it going? Hi. My name is Abby. Um, I'm curious, when you did, like, the preparation for this role, did you, um, like, did you, in, like, was your character inspired by anyone in particular? Or was this, you know? Missy is actually in the original Roots, um, but she is a very minute character. They definitely expanded on it to a certain extent in the remake. Um, but no, it wasn't, it wasn't like a Kunta Kente role, obviously. You know, Malachi has a lot to look at. And I, I did kind of have to develop it a little bit. Um, but obviously inspired by the setting, inspired by Mario and the other actors, it's not difficult to be able to develop that further. Hey, good morning. Hi. So I know the original was really groundbreaking mm -hmm. for its time, so I'm curious to know if anybody from the original cast reached out, like Ben Vereen, to offer advice or um, input on um, the project that you're working on right now. Yeah, well, uh, LeVar Burton uh, co-produced the original Kunta Kente, so that's just incredible right there. I got to talk to him, which was an amazing experience. Obviously, this was a groundbreaking role for him, so, so that was really wonderful. He was on set all the time. So what a great influence to have. He knows what he's talking about. Hey, I love your outfit. Thank you. I um, have been following online Tim Gunn, who's also a fashionista, has been fencing. And I saw you fence. <laughs> How'd you get into that? What do you like about it? Um, yeah, I started fencing when I came out to Los Angeles. We found a place. I think we were just driving by. We saw a place in Burbank uh, that did fencing lessons. And... I got into that and I took classes. Um, I mean, obviously as a young person, it's fun to just try new things. Um, I juggle as well and I took circus classes because I guess why not? And maybe I need to use that skill in the future. I've got it so I can fence and I'm ready for uh, any fencing performances in the future. But no, it's really fun. It really gets your aggression out. <laughs> I'm small but feisty. Hello. Thank, Hi. You, thank you for being here. It's a pleasure. Thanks. So uh, which uh, American uh, icon did you look up to that uh, changed the course of history in, 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 this, in this country did you, did you, that resonated with you that you learned from? American in history? Yes, like uh, civil rights leaders or presidents. Yeah. Um, I think any women in the women's suffrage movement are greatly inspiring. And currently today, um, which I also think this is, this has so many themes in it. And I think one of them is the way the women were held back as well, um, is clearly shown in this and the power play that white men play in, in that culture, which is very interesting. Um, so Susan B. Anthony is obviously one that comes to mind. People like that are good choice. Fine. Very good choice. And last question, please. Hello. Hi. So I just wanted to know, um, what part of Roots surprised you the most while you were learning and also filming the film since, you know, you were saying that you were learning about it in school, so I'm assuming that this part of history is probably new to you. So what a part of it surprised you the most? I think what surprised me the most um, was really the authenticity of it. Um, I think when we actually got to Louisiana, we filmed on an actual plantation. And I think that played a big role in it, the setting of it. It really set in, really became very real. There were slave cabins, um, everyone was in costume. And when you're just walking around on set, you really feel like you're there. 
um, which was really bizarre, but fascinating. And you know, sometimes you can't fathom that this actually did happen, but it did. And when you're in that setting, um, it feels very, very real. Like scary real, probably. Very scary real, and fascinating. When, when can we see this? We can see it, it starts Memorial Day. Um, night two airs the day after Memorial Day, and it airs for uh, four consecutive nights. On the History Channel. On the History Channel, A&E, and Lifetime. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.